and you have made right with God. It's not enough. He says, but with your mouth, confession is made. Confession is made. Proclamation unto salvation is made. You say it, you say it, and you are catapulted into your believing. That which you believed becomes real to you. The Lordship of Jesus Christ becomes real to you, to your spirit. And that changes everything. It changes everything. Look what life we've got. Hey, Christianity is not a religion. There's too many people in the world who think Christianity is a beautiful religion and they're wrong. They think it's a respectable religion. It's not a religion. Nothing in the Bible suggests that Christianity is a religion. It's a pity that most of us Christians all around the world have helped the world to think that Christianity is one of the world's great religions. They even say it's the greatest religion. And it's not. It doesn't matter how you dress it. It's not a religion. Hey, come on here. May I know something? Your relationship with your dad at home is that a religion? Don't you understand what Christianity is? It is the living, pulsating life of Christ in a human being. It is divinity at work in humanity. Christ in you. That's what Christianity is. Christianity is not knowing God through Jesus Christ. No. Christianity is Christ alive in you. Until he takes up his abode in the quarters of your spirit, Christianity has not begun. You understand that? It's no religion. That's what the Bible tells us in, in, in Colossians chapter 1 when you read from verse 26 into verse 27. It says, this is the mystery that has been hidden in ages and generations past, but now has been revealed to God's saints. He says, this mystery is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, 24 hours a day. Christ in you. Hallelujah. That's the revelation of Christianity. God didn't want us looking up to heaven to him. God didn't want us reaching out to heaven. He didn't want that. He did something. He called it Emmanuel. God with us, but he wasn't satisfied. Oh, come on. It matters, it matters what you know God to be. It matters. You better know it. If you read from the book of Exodus, the sixth chapter, read all the way from verse 1 down to verse 6, you understand something. One day in that story, God spoke to a man named Moses. And God said to him, Hi, Moses. <laughs> he gave him an introduction. He said, I am Jehovah. He said, Your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, knew me as El Shaddai. He said, They didn't know me by my name, Jehovah. But I am Jehovah. Why did he introduce himself so? Because you see, he wanted to do something that was different. He wanted to do something that required a different revelation of God. You see, they knew him as El Shaddai. What's El Shaddai? It means a strong and breasted one. It means your protector and caretaker. He takes care of you. He protects you. But now he says, Moses, I do more than that. He says, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew me as their protector and the one who took care of them, who gave them food to eat and watched over them. He says, I'm more than that. I am Jehovah. Jehovah means the Lord of the camp. Do you understand? The Lord who camps with his people. He comes in among them. And he is Lord, he's master, he's boss. You understand that? 
He fights their wars. So he says, I am Jehovah. I am Jehovah. What have you known him to be? Hallelujah. What have you known God to be? He said that because you see, Pharaoh had the children of Israel in bondage, and the revelation of El Shaddai would not suffice. They would need a new revelation of God. They would need to know the Lord in the camp who moves with his people and fights their wars. So he said, you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. That's what he said to Moses. He said, you will see what I will do to Pharaoh and he will surely let the people go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now there are many names of God, but all of those names are covered by his word. He's exalted his word above all the revelations of his names. And you know what? He gave us one name that covers them all. That name is Jesus. You don't need to know him as uh, Jehovah Rapha. You don't need to know him as Jehovah Sikeno. You don't, need, you don't need all of those names. Study them, understand them, and um, you know, appreciate them. But you, you can't cast out devils by saying, in the name of Jesus, come out, uh, 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 Jehovah Shammah. You see that? No. You can only use the name of Jesus. You don't require to add anything. It covers everything. Did you hear me? You don't have to add anything to it. You don't need to. The name Jesus covers everything. Because you see, the Bible tells us that God has vested all his authority in the name of Jesus. Don't add anything to it. You don't have to. You don't need to. That's the name that's above every name. The Bible says that he gave Jesus a name that is above every name. Above every name. Above every name. In heaven in earth and under the earth. He says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and of things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess. Not that Jehovah is Lord, or El Shaddai is Lord. Come on. Or Adonai is Lord. Uh-uh. Jesus. That Jesus is Lord. Lord over your heart, over your lungs. Come on. Lord over your body. Refuse to cave in to cancer. Refuse to give in to diabetes. You understand? Refuse. Because you're subject to someone who's greater than all, and his name is Jesus. You can't bow to Jesus and to cancer at the same time. Mm -mm. There's only one Lord. Say, I refuse. To bow, to bow to anything, anything. But, Jesus. but Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. 